My question to you, would it be nice to never look for clients because they all are looking for you and you have a hard time to work with them because your client base is exponentially growing. When I started my training, speaking and coaching business, I never thought this can be my case. And actually, I thought, and in fact, I was trained that in order to get clients, I have to constantly work on marketing, on promoting myself, on sending the brochures and DVDs, and to put a lot of money on advertisement. And I could never imagine that my agenda will be filled with speaking engagements one year ahead, or sometimes even longer. And we all here in this room are allowing to help people succeed, to help people improve. And every one of you has something to share with the world. And so this was my dream too. I had an experience that touched my heart and I wanted to speak to people. I wanted to help people to live to their best. I wanted to inspire people. I knew I have a message in me that had to get out of me. And I knew people are waiting for people like me and you as speakers, trainers, educators, publishers. But the moment I started my speaking, training, coaching business, I got my biggest problem. I was born and raised in the Soviet Union. And in the Soviet Union, we were teached that you have to be perfect. You have to be perfect in everything you are doing. And this is because Soviet Union tried to perceive the whole world that this, it is perfect. So I established a belief system that if I do anything in my life, I have to be perfect. I have to be perfect speaker. I have to be perfect mentor. I have to be perfect teacher. And I tried to make the impression of being perfect. And perfect means my life has to be perfect. Has to be perfect. My wife has to be perfect. She has to keep the, the house in order. She has to cook every day delicious food, walking on the hills through the kitchen, having the face from the cosmopolitan and body from the playboy and being a queen in a bed. <laughs> My children have to be perfect. They have to be properly dressed, never get dirty, taking care of themselves and eat all the vegetables. <laughs> I need to drive the perfect cars that only leaders drive. Nothing can be out of order in my life. And especially if I own, want to inspire and motivate people. My body has to be perfect and I don't need any alarm clock and I jump out of my bed at 5 a.m. and I do the physical exercise even before I go to the restroom <laughs> because I am perfect. I have to wear the Armani suit all the time also when I walk in my dog. I have to have my tie up straight because a real leader they have, they tie it up straight. And when you meet me, you will always see the leader in me. My shoes have to shine all the time, also during the rain. Everything has to be perfect in my life if I want to really inspire and motivate people. And I put a lot of effort and energy trying to impress people with my perfectness. And it didn't work. I tried to manage people's perception of me, never showing them who I really am. And it didn't work. I would go to a Toastmaster meeting. I, I would stay in front of the room and speaking about the prosperous and successful life, spending my last penny to come over to the meeting by the bus. First six months in the business, I wasn't earning money, but you would never know it because I was making an impression I was perfect. And I saw the, the louder I cry, that the higher I jump in front of the audience, the more I will inspire and motivate people. But nobody wanted to work with me. 
Nobody wanted to hire me. Nobody invited me to speak to another public speaking Toastmaster club. But no wonder, putting so much effort in trying to, to, to manage people's perception, one day after my speech, a guy came to me and asked, can you be my mentor? And I said, yes. Of course. And I was waiting for this for three weeks already. I wanted to be a teacher. I wanted to be a mentor. Even my business card was saying, mentor. <laughs> and we went to a cafe. And I was teaching him all the ways how to make a perfect speech, how to make the perfect impression to the audience, on the audience, how to wear the perfect suit. And then the bill came. And I'm sitting with my mentoree, and I cannot afford the coffee or the tea. But with all that, I still was convinced I need to be perfect. And in my understanding, I thought to myself, I need to find a teacher, a perfect teacher, a perfect successful person from whom I can learn. And I understood I need a radical change. So selling my last piece of property, I flew overseas to meet my future teacher, Jack Canfield. And I was sure he is going to show me the shortest way how to become perfect. And now before the meeting, the, the training starts, I'm at the door. And the moment the doors open, I'm in the front row sitting before Jack. My life is about to become perfect. But the moment he started to speak, something was wrong. And what he was speaking about blew my mind away. My son, my 17 years old son, is struggling with drugs. And I'm now trying, finding the way to help my son. Ten minutes later, Jack says, I'm married for the short time, and now I'm trying to be the best husband I can be and make this marriage my last one. An hour later, I hear Jack saying about his struggling with overweight for years. I flew all the way overseas. I sold my car, borrowed money to listen to all the ways that makes Jack imperfect. And something strange happened. I noticed that I'm starting falling in love with him. All of a sudden, it doesn't matter anymore what suit he was wearing, what shoes he had on. I started to love him for his parenting as a father who has a child who is struggling, as a husband who wants to make this, the last marriage the best one, as a man who is struggling with his body. Coming over there, I realized that I came there not to learn how to be perfect, but to learn that his power was in imperfectness and in his transparency. And at that moment, I made a promise that I became his student for the rest of my life. It was when I realized that my imperfectness made me for this job perfect. And when I learned the lesson, when I, tried, when, when I started to apply the law of transparency in my life, all of a sudden, my check, my uh, revenue came from $5,000 that year to $60,000 next year, to $100,000 next year, to $500,000 next year, and to $800,000 last year. And this year, we most likely will be crossing a million dollar mark. All of a sudden, my clients, my clientele expanded to 55 countries on four continents, and I already performed in 14 countries live. This is the 15th country, by the way. <laughs> and the secret to my success is called the law of transparency. 
I cannot tell you everything I learned in these years, in this only 20 minutes, but I can share as much as I can with you now. And the law of transparency says when you are transparent, when you are who you are, when you are real and sincere, you became vulnerable. And vulnerability leads to intimacy. And intimacy ultimately leads to what? To trust. And trust is exactly what, other, what people are looking when they are looking for friends and business partners. In my trainings, we do an exercise when people are divided in pairs and they share their secrets with each other for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes or so time, I ask people to raise their hand if they feel more trust toward their partner. And almost everybody raised their hand. And they say, this particular person is the person I trust the most in the whole room. But the law of transparency is easy in theory, but it's hard for most people to apply in life. Because for most people, to, to become transparent means to make a huge step out of their comfort zone. And people are afraid that when they become real, transparent, sincere, people may dislike them. People may not want to work with them anymore. And people are afraid that they will stay alone. So people choose to hide behind their masks and roles and be alone. But to play the roles, to wear the mask, you need to put a lot of effort and energy. Moreover, to be yourself, you actually don't have to spend any energy. But to pretend, you do. And it's very similar to if you were putting a ball under the water. To keep the ball under the water, you have to spend energy. And the more you hide, the more truth about yourself you hide, the more masks, the more roles you are wearing, the more energy you have to put for this. When we start to apply the law of transparency, this is actually the only way we can improve. We can only improve what we accept about ourselves. And if we choose to live in transparency, we choose the life of constant improvement. And everything in life is going to change. Your relationship, your family life is changing. All of a sudden you realize you know your dad better. You know your sister better. Because you trusted them and you trusted yourself to be transparent. All of a sudden you understand and realize that your reach is not in the bank. Your reach in the transparent relationship. And you become transparent, you attract more transparent people and you start to live more, much more happier life. When you are transparent, the chances are you love yourself much better and you live much more healthier life. When you are transparent, your business is ultimately growing. The number one reason for my success in business is that I allow myself to be who I am. And if I don't like who I am, I accept the truth about myself. And then I get the change, chance to change what I don't like about myself. And for me, the easiest way to grow business is to be who you are. People will recommend you. People will want to work with you because people love the way you are. To show transparency is easy with, this, with the blog, with the podcast, and with the videos. More than 50% of my clients are coming now from my videos. They come to my trainings and say, you know what, Mikola? I was watching your videos for a week or two. I was listening for what you are saying. And then I catch myself thinking, I know this person. And now I'm here because I want to learn more from you. And I didn't do a lot for this. I just was sharing who I am. I had a client. I spent with him half a year trying to help him to succeed in a coaching business. And in these six months, he didn't do anything. 
And after six months of this one-year program, he called me and says, Mikola, please refund my money. And I was so angry with him because I was putting my effort and my love and I was caring for him for six months. So at this point, I could not keep myself anymore. And speaking with him, I used all the bad words I ever learned in my life. <laughs> and I was speaking for about seven or eight minutes, mono. <laughs> After eight minutes, he says, wow, that's nice. And I wonder what internet would say when I upload this recording. I hand up the, the Skype. I was sitting in the couch and thinking to myself, this is probably bankruptcy. And then I started recalling that the, one of the major law I'm teaching is the law of transparency. And I have to be transparent in, the, in, in this case. And we were staying in Los Angeles at that day. And I thought, we are going to make a video before he, uh, he is putting the recording up to the internet. And we went to the Beverly Hills and I, was, and I recorded a video which I called Sex train, Success Trainer Use Bad Words. <laughs> and in Russian it sounds even more nicer. <laughs> and I uploaded this video telling that I was using a lot of the vocabulary, I, the whole vocabulary I ever learned. And he never put that recording up to the internet because he needed to. He, don't, he, he didn't need it to. One of the best examples of the law of transparency is Lisa Nichols. We met with her a few months ago in her office in California. And she said, Mikola, in the last six years, I never called potential clients. They are always calling me. And in these first 90 days of this year, I already did 36 speaking engagement, engagements. A friend of mine, a very famous psychologist, told to me, the biggest difference Soviet soldiers seen after the battlefield in Afghanistan, when they came, came back to their homes in Soviet Union, was that on the battlefield, they were never wearing the masks. They were armed. They were wearing the life protection jackets. They were wearing the boots. They had guns. But they never had masks. And it was like they were saying, you see real me. Because I know that this particular second can be my last second. And I don't know if tomorrow will come. And Soviet soldiers, they choose to live the authentic and transparent life. And when they come back home to their former, to their Soviet Union homes, they will see people as if they have the eternity to become transparent. And maybe this is the reason why Soviet soldiers, 20 years after, still are friends. They call each other. They support each other. They still meeting together and say celebrate birthdays together. This is because they seen each other without the masks. People are looking for real people. And my question to you, are you willing to live your life as if it's your last second? As if you, are not, no, you don't know if tomorrow will come and the only way you can live is to live that transparent and authentic life. Because when you do, when you do, everything in your life will change. Your relationship will change. Your family life will change. Your career life will change. Your health and happiness will change. And your fulfillment will be just very different. Thank you.